Greetings, backpacking enthusiasts. I'm Eric Hansen. Today, I want to be talking to you about backpacking in the desert. There are some unique aspects to backpacking in a desert environment that are going to be different than if you've ever backpacked in, say, the mountains or the Pacific Northwest or somewhere else in the world. So I want to be talking about all of the things that you need to consider for a safe, fun trip of backpacking in the desert. Do you want to give a quick shout out to Mystery Ranch? They are helping make this video and this series possible. And uh, they're also been supporters of ours with Epic Trails. So give a quick shout out to Mystery Ranch. They make amazing backpacks. And uh, if you're looking for a backpack yourself, go check them out at mysteryranch.com. They are awesome. I've been aware of them for years in my, since my guiding days and have always loved and appreciated their work. So thanks to Mystery Ranch. And yeah, let's get into it. Uh, so backpacking in the desert, there are a few unique aspects, like I said, about uh, backpacking. One, it's dry, it's hot, things are typically sharp and pointy, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of other factors. So we're going to get into it starting right now. One of the biggest, most important differences is going to be water. Obviously, the desert is known for its lack of water, so that is going to greatly interfere with or change how we approach our backpacking experience. If you're going to be backpacking through the mountains or places with constant water sources, you don't need to be hauling a bunch of water. You don't need to be, you know, really planning ahead for where your water sources are or how much water you need to carry or even how you can filter and uh, purify your water to make it safe to drink. So a couple of things about that. If you can see here, I've been using this MSR Guardian water filter for uh, quite a few years now, probably about five years out of this water filter itself. It looks pretty grimy and nasty. And all of that is thanks to the fact that I live in the Southwest. So when I go backpacking in Arizona or Utah, or I'm going through Canyon country, this water filter can handle the silt and just the dirt of our water sources here in the desert. So if your typical water filtration system, it, what it does is dirty water goes in, clean water comes out, and it is capturing dirt and silt and microbes and all of those things that make your water unsafe to drink, or at least unpleasant to drink. And what happens is if you're with a normal water filter, all that dirt gets quickly lodged inside and never goes anywhere. You might be lucky, depending on your water sources, you might be lucky to only get like 10 liters of water before you've totally destroyed your water filter. And obviously that sucks. So a water filter like this is going to simultaneously spit out your dirty, silty water. And you can actually see this is your clean water tube. That's your dirty water tube. You can see how much that has just kind of grimied up the tubes over the course of the years. And so that's a big deal because literally I don't need to change this filter ever, really. I think that technically MSR recommends you get 10,000 liters, which for most people, that's a lifetime of backpacking use. I have not changed this filter and I've been using this heavily for years. So that's one thing, how to get clean water. Now, this isn't your only solution for something like that. There are other things you can do. You can make stills. You can uh, basically dig out of a creek bed, a spot to let the silt drop out there. You can use bandanas. You can use t-shirts. You can do things to pre-filter your water if you do have a water filtration system that's not going to be as robust or as expensive as this. But if you do have one of those cheaper systems, do know that dirt will clog that thing up real quick and you better do some due diligence to make sure that you have clean water. Okay, that's filtration. Now we got to talk about water hauling. I often go backpacking with a dromedary, uh, also known as a drom bag. And what this will allow me to do, I can literally carry 10 liters of water in this. I'll probably also have my camelback and maybe a couple of Nalgene's. I, it, it's a realistic scenario that I might leave a water source, a spring or just a tank of water, like a place in a low point in a canyon, uh, and then have to go the rest of my day without water at all. And so 
you might need to haul a lot of water. So know your water sources, do some research in advance. You can pretty much blog or search for blogs on almost any location that exists out there and find people who've done it before who will give you some really helpful advice on where to go, uh, how much water you need to carry. Obviously seasonal uh, seasons are gonna affect that. Are you going in July versus November? That type of thing that's gonna affect all of that. But know that you might have to change how you do your water system and water management. And just drinking water is not going to be enough. One of the things that can happen quickly if you're backpacking when it's really hot and you're drinking a lot of water is something called hyponatremia, which is basically you're poisoning your body with too much water and you're not balancing yourself out with electrolytes. So bringing salty snacks is really critical for backpacking in the desert. I like to bring like crystal lights or some way to get an electrolyte slash salt supplement into my body. Uh, could even be literally salt tabs, but just making sure that you're balancing that out so you don't get sick. Because if you just keep drinking water, 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 you can literally get sick doing that. So know that, be safe, and uh, that'll go a long way just bringing salty things. Might not be self-evident, but I've got my trusty desert sun hat going on. Sun protection is going to be a really important part of backpacking in the desert. I actually really like to wear long sleeves. It's one of the reasons why this is actually one of my hiking t-shirts. Despite the fact that I look super spiffy in my button up shirt with a collar, I actually wear it for a reason. It gives me opportunities. If I wanna cool down, I can roll up the sleeves. But if I need, I'm just getting blasted with the sun. I can roll the sleeves down, I can pop my collar up or I can wear my big sun hat and stay protected. Also definitely bring sunscreen or some sort of application to protect your skin. That will go a long way to making sure that you are safe out there because often when you're backpacking in the desert, there's just nowhere to hide from that brutal sun. Heat management is also of course going to be a big deal. If you're hiking in uh, say hot temperatures of the summertime, I often, in other videos, I often say cotton kills and don't ever wear cotton. That's kind of actually not true. It's just a generality for like mountains and your more, your environments where most people are doing their backpacking. But in the desert, you can actually get away with cotton because it's so dang dry. There's no humidity. There's often no moisture. And so the reason why cotton is dangerous is because uh, it doesn't dry out, but yet in the desert, it often does. So you can wear your cotton t-shirts or sometimes you want that moisture where you dip your cotton t-shirt or some like a rag into a creek and you want it to stay wet and cool on your skin. Uh, those can be helpful tips for keeping you cool as you hike. So know that your, your materials, your quick dry stuff, Obviously with sweat, it's, you don't necessarily need to have the quick dry like you might in another environment. Cotton is okay for that. But I like to backpack with, sometimes I will bring a really light, lightweight uh, sleeping bag, or maybe it's even just, uh, not even sleeping bag, but it's just like a quilt. Maybe it's a sheet, something really lightweight so that when it's only getting down to like, say 65 or 70 degrees at night, getting into a 15 degree sleeping bag after sweating all day can be a really uncomfortable experience. So maybe adjusting your sleep system will also be really helpful. Uh, those are things to be aware of. Okay, we're gonna get real. We're gonna get a little bit uncomfortable here. We're gonna talk about poop. That's right, my friends, poop. Okay, deserts can be an entirely different, well, they are an entirely different ecosystem and environment for microbes and all the things that break down poop. There's almost no moisture in these desert places. So handling our poop is gonna be a different experience. So I wanted to give you an example of what you might encounter. Uh, this is a toilet to go. This is literally a toilet uh, that you backpack with. You would open this up, it opens up, creates a little uh, pot basically for you to poop in. If you can hear that, that is some, uh, I don't know what they are from a chemical standpoint, but it masks the smell and helps dry things out and makes it so that it's really not that big of a deal. But if you are going to go backpacking in a desert environment, you might wanna look up what kind of LNT practices are appropriate for your given area. If you're going through a canyon corridor, like 
uh, certain places where there's canyon walls and you're really limited to the space that you can actually go backpacking in, you're probably gonna have to poop in one of these and carry it out with you because there's just not enough space to handle that much poop of all of the people backpacking through that given area. However, if you're just out in the more open desert, then you can get away with doing what we normally do and dig a cat hole and that sort of thing. You might, one thing to be aware of is if it is a super dry environment, let's talk like a Death Valley type of environment, please do not bury your toilet paper because actually that environment is so dry that that toilet paper does not get the moisture that it needs in order to break down over time. So you might think, oh, it's toilet paper, it'll totally break down. Yeah, in almost all environments it does, and yet in a desert that might stick around for a couple hundred years because it is so dry, it just won't go anywhere. I don't know about the couple hundred years thing, but an uncomfortably long amount of time to where people after you are gonna find it. Sticking with the poop aspect is the other side of the LNT coin, which is our leave no trace. So that is why we even poop in a bag and carry some of this stuff out of the desert environment in the first place, is we wanna make sure that other people are having a positive experience after us. The desert is a slow growing place. It doesn't change very often. There's so little moisture that things just take a really long time. So with LNT principles, there's a couple of standards. You may have heard this before, but cryptobiotic soil is all over in the desert. And you may have heard the phrase, don't bust the crust. Well, it's literally a crust in the soil that has all these microbes and things that make the desert alive and a capable place of providing life for all your life forms, your, even your animals to your plants and not walking on this type of fragile soil is really important. So if you're out there and you see these tracks, stay where the tracks already are. Don't go off and bust the crust. And uh, yeah, there's other LNT things like don't rip down trees or shred apart the juniper trees. These things are so slow growing that when you're trying to get fuel for your fire or something like that, uh, if you're ripping apart these trees, they just will take a really long time to repair themselves. So know what you want. Uh, LNT, look up LNT practices. Uh, those can be readily available online and a lot of resources for you for all sorts of environments to know what are some practices that you need to use. Okay, let's talk about some other aspects of desert safety. Uh, sometimes when you're hiking through the desert or backpacking through the desert, the trail systems themselves are literally different than anything you may have been used to in the past. Oftentimes, we're just, you're using cairns or just rock markers along the way, and there's no discernible path necessarily because maybe you're hiking on slick rock or something like that. So knowing some basic orienteering skills, maybe you need to bring a compass and a map, or maybe you have something downloaded on your phone. Uh, you might not get reception out in a lot of these empty places, but that is something to know about, how to be safe out there. The trails might not be quite as well marked as what you're used to, uh, but here you're just walking in open desert. Uh, animal safety, uh, let's talk about that. Typically you're not gonna have bears, of course, in the desert, that's pretty rare, but you might have other things. You're, now you're, technically you might have some bobcats or mountain lions, but the most common thing that you might encounter out there, uh, the thing to really be aware of would be something like snakes, scorpions, and spiders. So as a general tip, you don't need to be overly concerned. I've been backpacking in the desert tons and tons of times and have seen some snakes. It's not that big of a deal. It's like, I actually get excited when I see them because it's more rare than it is. Like, I don't see them every time. But one of the things that you can do is don't set up your sleeping bag at camp, leave your tent open, because snakes are actually probably looking for a place to go hang out and uh, be warm. And a nice sleeping bag actually would look pretty enticing. So what I do is obviously if I'm setting up camp earlier than when I'm intending to go to sleep, make sure that your tent is zipped up and not allowing these critters to get inside. And if I have left my sleeping bag out and open, check it before you get inside that uh, sleeping bag because there have been some crazy stories of getting in your sleeping bag and noticing that there's a rattler in there too. I say that because I just want you to be aware. However, it's literally not that big of a deal. 
it's just general awareness. It's not like there's things that are actively always trying to hunt you down and kill you. Backpacking in the desert is a wonderful thing. You don't need to be scared of it, but that's how you can be safe. So one of the things that I think is important is how to take care of your gear. The desert is full of sharp things, sharp rocks, cactuses, spiny things, things that want to bite you and puncture you with their fangs. It's just, it can be a harsh environment. And I say that in jest, but at the same time, what if you are backpacking, I love backpacking with something like this. This is like a air mattress. It's super comfortable to sleep on. However, a cactus needle can do a lot of damage. They're patchable, of course, but don't put your sleeping mattresses directly down on the ground in general or have done a very thorough sweep to make sure that there are no cactus needles or just sharp rocks that can do a lot of abrasive damage to your gear. Being aware that your gear will probably take more of a beating in the desert than anywhere else in the world that it will because the desert is just so dang harsh. I've had lots of times where you're backpacking and you have to go through narrow places in a canyon and you just scrape a hole straight through your backpack. So just be aware that that might have to happen depending on where you're actually backpacking. So having durable gear or just taking the steps to make sure that you're not submitting your gear to that extra wear and tear. Uh, so know what you're doing. Last but not least, I wanna talk about footwear. Probably, I maybe even should have led with this, but it's something that will really impact your experience of backpacking in the desert what kind of shoes are you going to be wearing? So I have behind me a wall of boot and shoe options. Now this backpacking in the desert is where I'm gonna be going for my lightest weight option. Uh, mostly I go for low cut things, things that are even maybe in the trail running category, uh, but typically I don't actually want Gore-Tex. I want something that's really breathable, something that's really light. And most of that is for moisture management. I will inevitably, everybody will, but I definitely sweat a lot uh, and my feet get really sweaty. So if I have a big burly Gore-Tex boot in the desert, that's gonna become super swampy in there. And I'm gonna be really prone to blisters. And I don't want that and you don't either. So wearing something really light, maybe even something uncomfortably light, like a trail running shoe, that will be actually really comfortable when you're out there. Uh, I have a pair from Merrill here that I really like. I've uh, Ultras are really awesome. There's a lot of brands out there that do make a lightweight thing, but what I just am looking for is really just its breathability. So something like this versus a Gore-Tex full leather boot or something like that. You will not be comfortable in that. Wear something, sometimes there's creek crossings, and uh, yeah, you don't really have to take your shoes off for going through there because you can get wet, they're gonna stay light, they're gonna drain their water quickly. Those are the types of things that I'm thinking of. But yeah, bring lightweight socks, bring multiple changes of socks so that you can change out throughout the day because you do get so sweaty as well. Have a pair to sleep in and a pair to hike in so that you're staying comfortable throughout your day on the trail and have multiple options for your footwear and for your feet safety and longevity sake. There it is folks, that's the video. That's what I would greatly recommend to you for backpacking safely and efficiently in the desert. It can be a wonderful place to go and explore. I hope you get out there. And uh, yeah, leave some comments below. If you think I missed anything, hit me up and I would love to hear. I'm always trying to learn and uh, yeah, there's so much out there. You have so much knowledge, so share it with me too. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our fine little channel here at Backpacking TV so that I can keep bringing you these fun and helpful videos. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Eric Hansen. I'll see you later.